dead. He's yet alive. He's still alive. I can feel it in my head. And I can feel it in my feet. You know I feel it all over me. God's not dead. God's not dead. He's yet alive. He's still alive. Oh, God's not dead. He's yet alive. He's still alive. Don't you know? God. Shines of the Black Madonna, where we believe in a best self movement. Thank you for tuning in to our virtual village. Please go to our website to help us with our outreach. Please follow us on all of our social medias on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Ties and offering help us continue our ministries. Ties and offering help with our health, women's, and food giveaway. Please bow your head to pray. Please God, let us come into this new year with lots of new opportunities and possibilities, and let us become better versions of ourselves as we grow more over these years. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I believe that human society stands under the judgment of one God, revealed to all and known by many names. His creative power is visible in the mysteries of the universe and the revolutionary Holy Spirit, which would not long permit people to endure injustice, nor to wear the shackles of bondage. In the rage of the powerless, when they struggle to be free, and in the violence and conflict, which even now threaten to level the hills and the mountains. I believe that Jesus, the Black Messiah, was a revolutionary leader sent by God to rebuild the Black nation Israel, to liberate Black people from powerlessness and from the oppression, brutality, and exploitation of the white Gentile world. I believe that the revolutionary spirit of God embodied in the Black Messiah is born anew in each generation and that Black Christian nationalists constitute the living remnants of God's chosen people. In this day, and are charged by him with responsibility for the liberation of black people. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. That both my survival and my salvation depend upon my willingness to reject individualism. And so I commit my life to the liberation struggle of African people and accept the values, ethics, morals, and, and program, program of the black nation defined by that struggle and taught by the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with
come to the place for which our fathers died. Oh, we have gone over a way that which tears has been won. to be our best selves. Let's take a moment out of our week to meditate. Inhale in. Exhale out. Inhale in. Exhale out. You will find the Lord, your God, if you search with all of your heart and with all your soul. God's absence is only an illusion. God is as close to you as you would allow the divine presence to be. Divine energy, intelligence, and power are everywhere. The nearer you draw to the Almighty One, the closer the Most High will draw to you. Inhale in. Exhale out. Inhale in. Exhale out. Nearer and nearer to you with each command of your heart's love. Believe that the omnipresent one is ever approaching. In the darkness of your deepest prayers, know that with you, the merciful one is playing hide and seek. So just keep sinking the Lord while the most high may be found. calling upon his name while the Almighty is near. 
and in the midst of this dance that we call life, disease and death, if you keep calling, undepressed, you will find him. You will receive an answer from the Lord. You shall receive an answer from the Lord. Be blessed. Welcome, sisters and brothers. This week's message is entitled, Our Goal. And it it comes with with two scriptures for us to wrestle with. The first being Psalms 62, verse 3, that says, How long will you set upon a man to shatter him like a leaning wall, a tottering fence? And our second scripture, Nehemiah 2, verse 17. You've heard it before. You see the trouble we are in, how Jerusalem lies in ruins with its gates burned. Come, let us rebuild. Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem that we may suffer this indignity 
no longer. Again, we're talking about our goal. Chapter 4 of the book, The Black Messiah, by the founder and first holy patriarch of the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church, the Reverend Albert B. Clegg, Jr., the Honorable Jeremoji Obebe Ajaman, is a sermon entitled, We Are God's Chosen People. For that sermon, our founder used our first scripture, Psalm 62, verse 3, to ask black people in 1967, 1968, when the book was written, to, to ponder, how long will you set upon a man? Some, some Bible versions say, how long will you assault, attack, rage against, threaten, devise mischief against a man, a, a woman, a people, a black people, to shatter them, to slay, to murder them like a leaning wall, a tottering fence? And here it is, 2022, and we're still asking the same question. How long will the murderers of black people go free? How, how long will our votes, our voices, our, our virtues be denied? How long will our health care, our history, and our humanity be abused? Our presiding bishop, Jeremy G. Menelikimathi, says, These injustices will persist as long as we lack the institutional power to do for self and to generously provide our abusers with consequences and repercussions. And we'll lack the power, this power, that power, until we can successfully call a critical mass of our people to rally around, to give commitment to, and invest in program. A program for human development, a, a program for the recovery of our humanity, a program to become a power center for black self-determination. That's what our presiding bishop is, is issuing. He's issuing this call to those in that now, that those now famous words, our goal. And I, I'm not even gonna try to impersonate him. I'm gonna give you his words, but in my voice, our goal is to be the church of the future, the 21st century mystery temple, a, a place where the church is a tool for human development, human growth and evolution, the recovery of black people's humanity and dignity and a power center for black self-determination. His words reflect the passion and sense of urgency that we need right now. The same passion and sense of urgency possessed by Jesus and his kingdom of God ministry, the same passion and sense of urgency possessed by Nehemiah in our second scripture. When he returned to Jerusalem to see his city, his people lying in ruin and wondering how long will, the, will, be, will, will we be the, the world's whipping post? How long will you set upon a people to shatter us like a leaning wall, a tottering fence? But Nehemiah didn't succumb to fear and doubt and despair. No, no, no. He said the only way beyond the current circumstance and into a new day is through program, collective work and responsibility, organized program, a specific plan of action to handle our business. That's program. And so Nehemiah issued his call to the Hebrews. It was a call to program. You see the trouble we are in, how Jerusalem lies in ruins with its gates burned. Come, let us rebuild the walls of Jerusalem that we may suffer this indignity no longer. He called his people not to whine and cry, not to beg the Midianites to treat the Hebrews better. No, no. He called the black nation Israel to program specific actions to handle their own business. And we're issuing the same call today to our people. It's a call to program. We, and when I say we, I'm talking about the shrine. We offer a program in which the church is a tool for human development, human growth and evolution. Like the mystery temples of, of Kemet, ancient Egypt, where religion was a, a process that was less about memorizing scriptures and frothing about the mouth and more about growth, development, evolution. 
It's what Jesus was about when he told his followers what I can do, you can do, and even more shall you do, but you have to grow, develop, and evolve. And that's what we're about today. Being better today than we were yesterday. You and me stretching out of our comfort zones so that we can see and imagine today what we couldn't see or imagine yesterday. So we can do more and be more today than we could then. Do more, be more tomorrow than we can today. See, just as our beloved founder teaches a changed world demands changed individuals, folk committed to human development, human growth, human evolution, that's what we see today. That's why we have programs to produce changed, growing, evolved people. Atlanta's West End Learning Center, raising up children in a way that they should go. Woke Wednesdays offering our members a virtual small group experience. Detroit's Tree of Life Prison Ministries, cool workshops with meditation, yoga, Tai Chi from Houston to Calhoun Falls, South Carolina. We offer program because we can either sit here and cry and whine and wonder how long folk will kick us in the behind or we can kick some behind of our own by evolving and growing into our greatness. We also offer a program for the recovery of black people's humanity and dignity. And you may ask yourself, with all that black folk need, why is dignity so important? Well, that's what Jesus' Sermon on the Mount was all about. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the downtrodden. Blessed are the poor in spirit. No, you're not that. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. He was speaking to their humanity, to their dignity. And that's what the Black Messiah's chapter 4 addresses. Waking our people up to their worth, to our worth, to the importance of our dignity in our humanity. And that's what the Black Messiah's chapter 4 addresses. Waking up to our worth, the importance of our dignity, our humanity. There, our beloved founder states, often we don't think of our dignity as something of great value. But take from you your dignity and you have nothing left. Take from you the right to hold up your head, to feel that you are a man, a woman, the right to think, to be. Take away that dignity and there's nothing left but a groveling animal, a slave, Lord have mercy. Because of those who traffic in anti-blackness can convince you that you have no worth, no value, no dignity, then you're blinded to your Messiah potential, deafened to your divine calling and dumbed to your historic value and present and future potential. That's why recovering our humanity and dignity is so critical. Without a recognition of our humanity, without the ability to recognize and walk in your dignity, you can't do or be all God wants and needs you to do and be. That's why we have programs that help you grow in recognition of who you really are a black messiah only waiting to discover your inner divinity. That's why we have programs like African history classes to destroy the declaration of black inferiority. We call it in the church DBI. And to also destroy our acceptance of that declaration, ABI, so you can tap into your ancestral greatness. The enlightenment programs of our national cultural centers to push back against negative social stereotypes and lift up our agency, our ingenuity, our, our brilliance, service opportunities, service programs, food pantries and food giveaways, women of worship ministries, pearls, book clubs, the health ministries, black theology and African spirituality, service opportunities, because service is not only key to leadership, it's one of the most powerful displays of your humanity possible to serve others. We also offer Houston's Buy Black Marketplace, providing a path where there's dignity in our dollars. The Watoto House Child Care, 
that's coming soon in Detroit where we will be caring for children from under-resourced realities but treating them with the full, a full recognition of their unlimited inner divinity. We offer program because we can either sit around begging others to treat us better or we can recognize and exercise and flex our own humanity and our own dignity. Moreover, and I'm just about done y'all, we offer a program to create a power center for black self-determination or what Jesus would call the kingdom of God here on earth. See, we in the shrine, we are all about power, unashamedly building institutional power, institutions to feed and clothe and educate and protect ourselves, institutions with programs to tell our own story, chart our own courses, raise and praise our own children, our own beautiful black selves, and attracting like-minded individuals and institutions to band together to form a nexus, a power center. And when I say power center, I mean a community, a, a counterculture that recognizes and facilitates and nurtures and celebrates our Messiah potential, our inner divinity, a center that helps you access your mind, body, spirit, power, a center where we empower others, where iron sharpens iron, communal power, group power, black power, umoja, where love is an action word, a place where we recognize that we in the shrine, we're not the end all be all, but as a power center where we can attract other like-minded sisters and brothers who want to see the best for our people. As a power center, we can inspire and empower all in which we come in contact. We inspire those we may never even meet personally. Our works, our walk serves as our testimony. A power center, creating a growing network of power in our homes, streets, communities, cities, states, this country, and the world via the programs like this, the virtual village, via the programs of our cultural centers, the free tax services, the food pantries, the African history classes, yoga, tai chi, book clubs, buy black marketplace, and Lord have mercy, I ain't even talked about Beulah Land yet, 4,000 plus acres of infinite power possibilities located in Calhoun Falls, South Carolina, and our Pan-African ministries with our loud and proud congregations in the motherland. We offer program because we can either wonder why other folks' institutions continue to exploit and mistreat us, or we can build our own damn institutions to care for ourselves and nurture and support ourselves that serve as a village meeting place, a, a county seat where we can come together, where we can work together, forgive together, love together, grow together, beyond organizational or religious affiliations where the only requirement is that you love black people and wanna see us build some power, some institutions, some pyramids today. With these programs, because of these programs, whether we know it or not, whether our people recognize it yet or not, we are becoming the church of the future. Yes, even with all our shortcomings and our failure, we don't get everything right. Oh man, Lord have mercy, that's a whole nother sermon. But even with all of that, we are becoming the church of the future, what Jesus called the kingdom of God here on earth. Because our goal is to build the church of the future through program, through program, through program, organized program. But don't get it twisted, y'all. When I talk about program, program doesn't mean that everyone does the same thing in cold, robotic lockstep. No, central to our program is being open to the Holy Spirit and encouraging our members 
to bring their best selves, their, their passions, their talents, their dreams, and their openness to spirit to the fore. Our presiding Bishop Jeremiah Jamili Kimathi uttered those words that we now know as our goal during an all church meeting in, in Detroit. He said he had a script, he was on script, but his message wasn't getting through, so he went off script. In other words, he surrendered to the leanings and direction of the spirit and uttered those now famous words, but he was not alone. Spirit also moved Reverend Karima to record those words. It wasn't in the plans. It wasn't on the agenda for her to record that evening, but she followed that small, still voice that said, you need to capture this. And she captured those powerful words about program. And had she not, those words may have gone, those words may have been lost forever or may have just been the property of those few folk that were in that meeting room. Our goal outlines what we are about. And those words will be relevant for years and decades to come. They call upon future generations. That, that call upon future generations, it may change in specifics. It may change in how they express that calling through their actions. But the call, our goal, will still be true. It'll still be relevant because our goal is to be the church of the future. The 21st century mystery temple. A place where the church is a tool for human development, human growth and evolution. The recovery of black people's humanity and dignity and a power center for black self-determination. We're doing it in every city that we're in and we're gonna do it in every city that we're going to in order to facilitate the consciousness raising of black people. Our goal simply said is to restore our people to our original place of power and dignity in the world. That's our goal. And we have the programs to make it happen. So if you are tired of wondering how long will we be set upon? How long will we be ridiculed, abused, disrespected, and brutalized? If you're tired of, of, of contemplating how, how long hardened racist hearts will resist changing. If you're tired of asking how long will our votes and voices and our humanity and our children and our seniors, our communities be disrespected. If you see the trouble that we are in, how black world lies in ruins with its gates burned, then you need to get with the program. The program of black power, the program of God power, the program of your power, and join this best self movement here in the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church. Come let us rebuild the walls that our people the world over may suffer this indignity no longer. That is our goal. Amen. Ashe. Walk in the light. Beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day.
brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I was blessed by the word today. And I'm so happy to be a part of this amazing and dynamic ministry, celebrating 68 years of Christian service. If you haven't already, I invite you to subscribe to this channel so you can continue to be fed by this ministry and to also like and share this message to your social media friends in order to bless somebody else who may be waiting to hear a word just like this. Join me now for a prayer of benediction. God, we thank you for this experience of worship. We thank you for every person that came into contact with this ministry today and those who will benefit because we have spent this time together seeking to be our best selves in order to further the cause of liberation. In the name of that great liberator and beloved ancestor Jesus, we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.